What is up guys? Uh, I've been wanting to make a video for a while on Marana. Uh, I've been owning with her recently. Uh, these last eight games, not this one, this was a couple months ago, but these last eight games have all been played on this patch and they have been eight wins in a row. And the most recent one I played today was like a 7k average game and so I wanted to take this opportunity to break down this game and show you how you can learn five techniques to be immortal as pause for a player and a little bit focused on Murata, but these a lot of these will be applicable to whatever heroes you play. So let's look at this game. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about, uh, this is like sort of Murata specific, but it, it, it this applies to every hero you play. You need to conceptually understand what your hero does and like how you play to your hero's strengths. And that sounds like duh, but like this is what a lot of people like don't really understand. Um, it's kind of why you see the recommendation a lot of like, oh, only spam like a couple heroes and like learn them really well. Uh, the point is to like learn how those heroes want to play and like what they do. You can check out my YouTube video actually. I've been making a series on like how to plan out your lane and this like involves like discussing like the breakdown of certain heroes and like how they play and like what that means for like the lane. That's just like the basics in the early game. Uh, but let's just talk about here, Marana, like what does this hero do? You are a follow-up stunner with your arrow. You have good escape mobility. You push lanes and do damage with Starstorm. And you're like good at chasing with your leap, right? And then you offer some team utility, gank potential, escape potential with your Moonlight Shadow. That is what Marana does. And I'm going to show you in this lane, starting with that first kill you just saw, of like how you utilize these strengths, right? I waited till the Witch Doctor stun came out. Then I used my arrow, picked up First Blood. Here in this lane, I'm just going to wait for my Tusk to like kind of use his abilities and wait for the opportunity for the arrows. Don't use blind arrows, guys. Like I'm not just tossing out arrows. I'm playing the lane, looking to harass. And if they step out of position, like this Clinks does, boom arrow, boom kill. And then you use your leaps to get away. Pretty shortly here, I'm going to show you another example of just like, you know, utilizing this hero's strengths, right? I harass this Clinks down, finish my D ward, and use this opportunity to chase down this kill. And it's really just about understanding the limits of your hero. My Tusk here, he was like, how did you get that kill? I told him, dude, it's because I'm good, right? It's because I used my spells. Oh, boy. Pro tips, guys, pro tips. That's all you get on this channel is how to get better at Dota. Pro tips like this, use your abilities. And one more example in the lane I wanted to show of using, you can use like creeps. Uh, don't pull like this, pro tip, don't do that. Uh, using creeps that are about to die is set up for arrow. Um, if you don't have a setup stun coming, Look for creeps that are about to die. So this range creep, I'm like, I'm going to arrow this. If I miss, I secure the range creep. If I don't miss, this is easy kill. And this Marcy was there because she was going to go for the deny, right? So you can use these little opportunities to set up arrow stuns um, in your lanes as Marana. So tip one was, you know, understand your hero and playing to the strengths. This is a little bonus tip. This isn't tip two, but this is going to be its own little tip. Uh, when you're doing little dives like this in the early game, it's okay to use your glyph and glyph your wave. So here, the tower is attacking our creeps, and I glyph the wave to go find this Marcy, who TP'd out, because she saw me diving, and with this glyph, like, there's a very low chance that she gets out here. So you can just glyph the wave like this to uh, go for early dives, especially on mid, this happens a lot. So bonus tip for you there. Tip number two, guys, prioritize catapults. It's so important to push with catapults. So you're going to see in this upcoming segment how important catapults are. Pay close attention. Catapult number one. So I killed that catapult, and I run straight bottom because we have a catapult here. I'm pinging my tusk. Keep this catapult alive, dude. This is how we take the tower. Keep this catapult alive. I use two leaps here to save my catapult with one hit left and take like 500 damage from this tower to keep the catapult alive. And you're like, hey, this tower is already really low. Maybe we would have gotten it anyways. But it's just important to take it now, you know? If we don't take this now and this tower has like another 200 HP and somebody like TP's in, 
like right i just lost some hp uh it's just really important to keep the catapults alive and like get these towers as soon as possible like not two minutes from now like just take it now and then that just opens up the map earlier for everything else catapult number two Catapult number three. Kill the catapults. So the catapults spawned again at 15, and here I mess up because I use my arrow on this Marcy for a kill like a moron while there's a catapult right here. Should have saved the arrow for the catapults. Be smart, guys. Use Kill the catapults. Catapults are important. Forget kills on heroes. Kill the catapults. However, I make up for it by immediately keeping to another lane to kill the catapult there. That's how important it is. Get out of dodge, kill those catapults. Here, you're about to see some great catapult killing execution. So there's a team fight breaking out top. And instead of paying attention to that, I TP mid to kill this catapult. Good play. Ignore the fact that my team's dying top. Kill the catapults. We clean up a fight. Don't worry about Roshan, guys. Play for what matters. Play for what matters. Yes, the catapults. And you'll see immediately after helping my team kill this unimportant Roshan, I prioritize the next catapult. It's the ninth catapult I've killed this game in 25 minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so 25 minutes. They spawn at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So there's been... Five waves of catapults. That's 15 catapults, and I've killed nine of them. I've killed nine of the 15 catapults that have spawned in this game already. Kill the catapults. This is a hot bonus tip for you guys. I was going to tell you as a tip to fly out regen, right? I flew out this salve at like 7.30 after I'd been bottom. You know, salve up. And then, you know, I thought a better tip was just don't do this. That I feel like it's a good tip. Don't do that. So, bonus tip there. Don't do what I just did there. Okay, so tip number one was understanding your hero. Tip number two, prioritizing catapults. Hopefully, you know, I sank that in. Here's a replay. Prioritize catapults. There are some bonus tips. Tip number three, guys, is don't leave mid if you're if somebody on your team needs to push it out in the next couple seconds. So there I killed the catapults, and I couldn't go anywhere else because I knew this mid wave was coming in, and somebody had to be here to defend it. Otherwise, they were going to get free tower pressure on our mid tower. Uh, so it's really important, don't abandon the mid wave and go do something else if another wave is about to come in. You just have to pay attention to the timer. This is another example of tip three, don't walk away from mid. So you're going to see me here, I clear mid once, and what I do after clearing mid is again, stay in the area. Notice nobody on my team is going to be here to clear mid when the next wave comes. You can see it at my tier two, it's at their tier two. I should not walk away and go do something else here. Hang around mid for another like 10 seconds, clear the next wave, then go do whatever you think you need to do next. So really important to just not walk away from this mid lane unpushed. So the end result of me walking to whatever my next play is, is there's creeps walking into the opponent's mid tier 2 tower. It's going to set up our next play, whatever it is, because we're going to have information, right? Somebody on the team's going to be clearing it, or they're not going to be clearing it. And then we'll know that. So the next tip I want to talk to you guys about, tip number four... This is going to sound a little dumb, maybe, but some of you need to hear this. Press all your buttons. This is referring to teamfights and engagements where it's important that you press all your buttons. So after we uh, hang around mid a little bit, and it looks like something's going to develop, I'm going to snipe a creep. A fight breaks out top. It is important that I press all my buttons. So I immediately use my one of my earn charges. I use my leaps, I use my star storm, I use another urn charge, I use another leap, I press all my buttons, this necro barely dies. Uh, so just press all your buttons, guys. And we're going to fast forward to the next example for tip four of pressing all your buttons. Here again, we're going to have an engagement after this monkey dies, nice of him. So we get the arrow, and then this next fight, you gotta use everything, guys. I use my urn, I jump in, I use my star storm. You gotta burst these heroes down. Don't save buttons for later. 
use them, get your cool, get your spells on cooldown so you can then use them again. Holding spells is usually not a great idea. So all my spells on cooldown, all my urn on cooldown. This leads in to tip number five. Know when your role at like a team fight or an engagement is done and go split push the side lanes. This is so important. So I immediately TP away. My team has not even killed the tower yet. I don't care. My job is not to kill the tower. Look at this lane. It's time to clean it up. I'm going to give you a bunch of examples in this video of me doing this, and I hope you see how important it is from how often I do it. So tip number four, press all your buttons. Tip number five, after an engagement, ditch wherever you are and go split push the damn side lanes. Tip number six, reconnect with your team after you split up. So I pushed out the side lane and then I rejoined my team for the next play. This is a cycle. I'm going to show you how this is a cycle that you need to implement. So we are going to net watch this next fight break out. I use press all my buttons. Press all my buttons. I do not chase this Dawnbreaker to the end of the earth. I TP. This isn't to a side lane, it's to mid because nobody's mid. Uh, and mid is very important to push out as well if nobody's pushing it out. So I TP away to another lane, push it out, and then I reconnect with my team here. I'm going to call this reconnecting with my team. It's just one person. But I'm reconnecting to make the next play, right? We find this Clinks. Uh, buyback alert. And feed alert by me. But you can see the cycle. Win engagement, split push the side lanes, reconnect, right? Good things happen. Here's the next engagement. Press all your buttons. Use your arrow, use your spells. Split push the next lane. And here's something that happens all the freaking time I see at low levels. You have a person on your team that's in a lane that needs to be pushed, right? This TP, this Tusk keep you to this lane that needs to be pushed out. And then he proceeds to walk away from the lane. I know for a fact this happens all the time in lower MMRs. When this happens, you need to go push out the lane that your other teammate walked away from. If your support and your core walks away from this lane, you need to go push it out. My Tusk is a core. He walked away from this lane. I need to push it out. So I kill this wave one is after my Tusk walked away. So if I don't do this, none of this happens. A second wave I kill and a third wave I kill to shove this lane all the way into their tier two tower. You have to do this, guys. This is three waves I just pushed in. If I don't do this, this monkey is like killing our tier one tower and pressuring our tier two bottom if I do not kill these three waves. I promise you, you need to do this and it happens all the time in your games. I promise you it does. So next engagement, I reconnect with my team. I press all my buttons. Notice I press all my buttons. And this is important as well. I want bottom to be pushed out again, right? But it's really important to not walk backwards on the map and like walk to this lane here where these creeps are. It's really important that when you guys are aggressively postured and the enemy has dead heroes, that you do not just run back to the furthest away, right? We want to oppress them when they respawn so you can keep this lane pushed by cutting it. You know, this is safe to do because they're like scared, they're dead, they're respawning. They don't know if my team's behind me or not. So it's like safe to do. Cutting that lane is like an extra 30 seconds that nobody has to go deal with this other lane. Super important to do that. And we see the cycle continue. I push out that lane. I reconnected with my team. Boom, we got Roshan. I keep the lanes pushed out. We take Roshan. I immediately TP to the side lane again. This lane's always pushed in because Monkey is doing a good job of like split pushing it. So I TP immediately away from my team to push out the lanes again. This is super important. If you watch my last video with the Sand King, uh, you know, I show collapsing the map after Roshan. This is pretty similar to what I'm doing right now. Here we kind of like looked for this monkey kill and I didn't clear this wave. Maybe a mistake, honestly. I should have just prioritized the wave instead of trying to find this monkey. Another engagement. Press all your buttons. 
all your buttons, your Wraith Pact, your Spirit Vessel, your Drums. Please press all your buttons, guys. I, I see you not using all your abilities. It matters. Here again is the final example of me pressing all my buttons. Any fight, all buttons. Press them all. Everything's on cooldown. That's how you win engagements. So this is kind of a bonus tip connected to like the split push waves. Don't ever walk away from a creep wave. So here my bats walking towards mid, my team's all at their base. A lot of people here at low MMRs I know would just reconnect with their team not really paying attention to what's happening around them. But you have to like kill these creep waves that are right next to you. And you know maybe at this point it doesn't matter we're 20k ahead. But these are the types of things that just build your lead in the first place and it's just having the discipline to do it every time. And remember arrow catapults. And then you see, you know, we're, we're killing them all, we're in their base, but reconnect with your team. It's that simple. You saw the cycle uh, just over and over and over, right? So this is the end of this video. Hopefully you guys can take this to heart um, and not just take it as like, oh, some of this is obvious, but really the discipline to do it every time over and over quickly and consistently. And that's, that's what makes Immortal level players, you know, uh, have like this kind of map control and impact. It's constantly pushing in these lanes, it's joining team fights, reconnecting with your team immediately after you split push whatever wave you need to split push, and then it's using all your spells in fights multiple times. Hopefully you like this video. Uh, I tried to make it a little bit funnier than some of my other ones, so... Hopefully uh, that came off well. Um, and yeah, this was a little bit of an easy game. This Clink's like kind of griefed, but he was trying uh, at some times when he wasn't buying back, and the rest of their team was trying. So, you know, if, if I had like not been playing well, this game easily could have gone worse. Uh, they would have had way more split pushing with Monkey if I wasn't counteracting it, and it would have split our team up. Uh, so, you know, never, never take games for granted. Like, I lose games like this where I don't play well, even if they've got somebody that's griefing happens a lot uh so yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh let me know if you like the uh, funnier style or if you think i'm not funny i guess you can let me know that i'd be a little sad but uh yeah thanks and i'll see you in the next video